Only too soon she heard the sound of boots on stone again, advancing down the long corridor and stopping before her cell. She watched as the key turned in the lock. So this was it. This was her end, and she knew it. She didn't even look up to see who had come for her. She felt their strong arms, smelt their unwashed flesh, their sweat. She was not going to let herself be dragged like the Duchesse. She stood up straight and shook herself free from their clutches. We are all equal. But I, unlike you, am not armed, she said calmly. Please take your hands off me. The two brutal looking men, astonished to be spoken to in such a manner, let go of her. Cedo took a deep breath and walked down the corridor, trying her best not to limp. She didn't want anyone's pity. To la force, she heard as the Duchess came out of the jailer's office. Seeing Cedo waiting on the stairs, the Duchess shrugged her shoulders as if to say that it wasn't too bad. Then the street door was thrown open. For a moment, Cedo was blinded by the light. Then she saw all too clearly a sea of swords and pikes. The Duchesse, realizing what fate held in store for her, tried to pull away from the guards, only to be caught screaming by three men carrying blood-stained sabers. Cedo saw them lift their swords. She closed her eyes and tried to shut out the nightmare cries and the loud grunts of the men as they wielded their weapons. Then the street door was slammed, leaving the stone-paved floor splattered with the Duchesse's blood. Cedo's legs were trembling as she was taken into the makeshift courtroom. In the shadowy light, she could see that it was full of men. Behind the table sat a man called Stanislas Maillard. He was dressed in black, his long, lank hair pulled back into a queue at the neck. He had a gaunt face and deep-set eyes. Cedo thought that if death ever had a face to call its own, it would look like this. Maillard had been elected to carry out the duties of the President of the People's Tribunal, a task he took no pleasure in, yet nevertheless performed meticulously. Name, age, and place of birth, said Maillard drawing his bony index finger slowly down the prison register. Cedo answered the questions clearly. Having found her name, he informed her that she was being held for high treason against the nation. How do you answer? I support the revolution and wish its success with all my heart, said Cedo. She knew that any other answer would mean death. Then why did you try to leave our glorious country? I was born into a family where my wishes and views held no weight. It sounded to her as feeble as it was. She knew it wouldn't save her. The president looked again at his papers. This girl was definitely prettier than any of the others he had got rid of today, and she had a lovely voice. So, you say you had no way of stopping your father being a traitor to his country? That is right, sir. Enough! How do we find the prisoner? To la force! came the shout from round the room. The president brought down his hammer and cried, To la force! Take her away! Cedo was determined to keep her head high, to look him straight in the eye so that he would not forget her. Two guards seized her roughly by the arm, but at that moment a dreadful apparition charged into the room. The guard if guard he was, was drenched in blood. Furious, he stood in front of Maillard and slammed his bloodied fist onto the table. What do you think we are? he shouted. We've been hacking and killing all day without a stop. We ain't machines, you know. A man needs his rest. A man needs something to eat. Maillard looked up at the clock and spoke to the two men who were about to take Cedo out. Leave her. Cedo was shoved forcibly down on a bench. What shall we do with her? said one of the two guards. We need a break too, you know. Maillard looked at Cedo. She was a problem he didn't want. A pretty problem. And she had nice eyes. 
He tapped his fingers rhythmically on the table, looking for a way out of his predicament. Bringing up his hammer, he bashed it upon the table again and proclaimed, Innocent! For a moment, Cedo wasn't sure if she had heard him right. But then a shout went up in the jailer's office. Vive la nation! Her guards rushed forward to congratulate her, lifted her up and carried her out of the street door towards the gate, shouting, We have one who is innocent!